This is Flappy Bird, my RC Magnus Effect aircraft. I designed the first prototype this was a few months back. Um, just, uh, just a scratch build with pieces I had lying around. And it worked. It was a little sluggish. Um, I made some improvements, learned some different things. And then it came up with version 2. I designed this guy in CAD. Um, he uses some 3D printed parts. Um, I assembled about 50% of it at home in kit form and did the final assembly at Flight Fest East 2017. Um, so let's take a closer look at him here. So he flies using the Magnus Effect, which is a backspinning cylinder, or in this case a flap. It could be really any backspinning symmetrical shape. Um, the cylinder, or the flaps in this case, is on a 12 millimeter carbon fiber rod. It's continuous. Um, this is all foam board construction, dollar, dollar General stuff. These are 3D printed disc supports I made to keep the circular ends from tipping side to side and breaking off. There's four of those. They're just single layer features, 3D printed. Um, inside there, you can see some more 3D printed parts, the white right there. Those are bearing carriers I made, flange bearing carriers. There's two of them. One right there, one right there. They sandwich together using three um, M3 screws and lock nuts there. Um, inside of that 3D printed part is a 18 millimeter by 12 millimeter, I believe, um, low profile ball bearing. One ball bearing in each one. And then there is a cylindrical spacer that keeps the bearings installed in case they were the press fit were to fail. So the main body here is three sandwich layers thick. Um, no particular reason. I just went with three after the prototype was two and a bit flimsy. Um, well, I lost my weight here. It kind of eats the dirt if you don't put a weight on the tail. There's a carbon fiber rod in the middle layer you might be able to see there. Uses elevator and rudder control. There's the rudder. It could be a bit bigger. Um, it could use more authority. The elevator in this Magnus Effect aircraft is kind of weird. It doesn't respond the way a traditional elevator does on an air airplane. In fact, it might not even be needed. So I might experiment with taking it away. There's an airplane. Okay, uh, I might experiment with taking the elevator away to save weight. You could take out the weight of the servo, the linkage, the hinge tape. Um, up front is a Hobby King DT750. You can see it has, let's see, where is his level? Okay, there, there, the bird's level now. So that's probably 10 to maybe between 10 and 15 degrees up thrust. The up thrust obviously counteracts the massive air resistance of the spinning flaps down here. Here's a, uh, I don't know, it's a, is that a 30 amp speed controller? 36 amp Thunderbird speed controller. Fitting name. And I have a 1375C battery, three cell. And I have, I'm using the 75C because I need a high discharge rate because um, this being only the second model, um, I haven't perfected the design. He needs about full throttle to climb out. And if going into a headwind, about 75% throttle to maintain altitude. Um, there's googly eyes, those are critical. So, let's go fly him. Okay, so I've switched to my GoPro hat camera. Just the GoPro zip tied to the bill of my hat. Um, so I apologize if the uh, view isn't quite perfect. And hopefully I can get this right so you can see him in the shot when he's flying. So you can see I just have a little slot down here for the battery. Could do something fancier. And I just tape to secure it each flight. Um, again, not a very finalized design, but it works.
so make sure you launch into the wind because you need some speed to get going. Sometimes you can get the, pin, the paddle already going. There it goes. So I'm going to launch with 100% thrust and see what happens. Those deer are confused. All right, high speed pass. So he doesn't really climb out that good. Um, you can kind of use the elevator to adjust the pitch, although you're just kind of straining the motor. I just kind of give it a full throttle and let him take his time to climb out. So I'm really only got full throttle on, steering him around the sky. Like I said, the elevator really doesn't do much. You can kind of use it to yank back and try to gain some emergency altitude um, but I'm still experimenting with it if you do down elevator he does a goofy thing where you can tell it's still trying to go up but the nose is down not really sure what I'd relate that to almost like a, maybe a blimp or something but it's a really bizarre feeling this was really fun to fly at flight fest I always got lots of questions after I flew it people wondering what the heck they're looking at. It's definitely an eye catcher with a rotating cylinder there. I'm above the trees so there's more wind so I'm just kind of almost hovering in place. Put the nose down. So here I'm pushing the nose down. Speeding up. How is that for a chase camera? <laughs> Walk around in circles. Hoping I don't step on my camera I left on the ground somewhere. And I'm not going to push this battery too long because I've been full throttle for a while now. So I'm going to go ahead and land. Oh, that wasn't the most graceful landing. So this overall design in general only has, I don't know, probably less than 25 flights or so um, since I've started tinkering with it. There's so many different uh, configurations you can do. When I My first prototype had another disc here and then these flaps were offset so it was flat 90, flat 90. and seems like that was just kind of a waste of weight. I found a kite designer. They used to um, make kites like this, or maybe they still do. I think they called them flip wing kites. Um, so I found a guy that experimented with different flip wing kite designs, and he said, yeah, I mean, the, the simple paddle is really the best design to go with. So that's kind of the one I stuck with. Um, this is These are 8-inch discs, so 8-inch flaps. Um, uh, I guess you could go smaller, maybe, if you had a good motor or something. I don't know. Um, I might experiment with that next. 
might be able to fly a little faster and maybe the paddles will even spin faster and give, generate better lift. So this is by no means an optimized aircraft or anything. Um, I'm still messing around with it. It'd be neat if I could fly him without having to use 100% throttle all the time because it's probably not good for my batteries and electronics. Um, so I am hesitant to kind of publish plans on it just because I'm not really all that uh, certain of the design and you know so I might mess around a little bit more um, you can see I just kind of went with a um, scale or proportion I thought was right in a way I just kind of scaled it up from my first prototype well I think that about covers it um let me know if you have any comments or questions thanks for watching See ya. That was about the world's slowest spiral dive.